good Thursday to you guys. Listen, I want to talk about conditioning, warming up. You know, when you play guitar, you typically start slow and you do things to condition yourself so that so that when you play licks or you play chords, you can do them well. So the same applies to chromatography and doing TLC and flash. And we'll really talk today again about TLC plates and flash. And what we have when we want to use a TLC plate and what a lot of people forget to do is to pre-wash a plate. And what we're talking about is conditioning and for standardization and reproducibility to help you so that from plate to plate, from box to box, column to column, you're going to get great results. So when you have a TLC plate, what is recommended by the manufacturers is to pre-wash the plate and if you, this is for removing impurities, so we recommend pre-washing the night before in 50% methanol and chloroform. And what you're going to do is you're going to run your plate and then let it air dry. Um, if you want to do extraction, if you're planning the next day to do extraction from your TLC plate, then what we recommend is to run the mobile phase that you're going to use for extraction and let it air dry. So you're going to do that the night before. And if you've got a lot of plates to do, then do a lot of plates the night before, let it air dry. And then prior to use, if it's a glass back plate, you'll put it in a vacuum oven at about 130 C for roughly 30 minutes. And what that's going to do, it's going to actually help polymerize the binder better and make the plate activate better. So again, when you spot it, you'll have more reproducible results. For aluminum and plastic back plates, we recommend uh, 90 C for roughly 30 to 60 minutes. If you're using plastic back plates, we recommend putting the plastic on either a glass, piece of glass or a piece of metal so that the heating is even and that the plate doesn't curl up. So we're looking at TLC here and that's what we recommend. I know that a lot of you guys like to cut corners and just go right out of the box, but since the manufacturers tell me this is the way to play and if you want to play reproducible, this is the way to go. Okay, let's talk about column chromatography. Let's talk about silica gel. Um, again, um, we're looking at standardizing for reproducibility from user to user, from lot to lot, etc. And a lot, and most of the time, people are taking silica gel out of the drum. The drum's open. They're pouring it out. They'll keep it in a beaker. It's open. It's sucking up the moisture from the air. So what we recommend is just put it into a vacuum oven roughly around 130 to 160 C for 30 to 60 minutes to help drop, dry off excess moisture. And the same would apply to alumina. You can even do any of your bonded phases this way. Just good conditioning. Um, so let's talk about packing silica in a column for reproducibility and what you should do. Um, there is definitely a little bit of different, there are definitely differings of opinion from the camp of whether I dry pack or do I slurry pack. And in speaking to a lot of chemists, they recommend dry packing for flash chromatography. It's simple, it's fast, as you pour into the column, just tap so that everything's nice and evenly packed. Um, once you've done that, then um, pre to condition your silica for your run, just run the mobile phase two to three column volumes that you're going to be using. So two to three column volumes and that way you're making everything uh, ready to go to put your sample on. Uh, the same will apply to C18. Uh, pack it dry. You don't have to pack slurry pack it. Um, again, two to three column volumes of the mobile phase that you want to run. Uh, Telephone call, amazing. We get interrupted even when we do these videos. Fortunately, we have people that answer the phones here. It's amazing, they do their job. Um, let's talk about one thing, alumina. Uh, alumina is very exothermic, and one of the things that you should be a little bit more sensitive to is when you do condition it, give it a little bit of time to, um, for some of that heat to dissipate. Um, we've seen in larger 
processes where alumina can cause air bubbles and what will happen is it will definitely affect chromatography. I've spoken to some people about the exothermic situation with silica but apparently it's not as drastic so it's not such a uh, concern for you but if you are using alumina I would definitely suggest after you've conditioned it with the mobile phase for two to three column volumes just give a little bit of time for some of those bubbles to dissipate. Um, otherwise, hey listen, we're ready to go, we're going to get more into tips and things for all types of chromatography for you guys. If you have any questions, just shoot us an email at our website. Um, we do have a chat feature, you can always go online. And if you want some guitar you know, tips, conditioning tips, man, I'll be glad to help you with that too. Otherwise, ciao.